I feel a bit bad. I heard that you might have gotten charged like a late checkout fee to stay here and okay. film with us. And I want to give you a chance to, to make that money back. Oh, okay. Is that okay? Well, yeah, absolutely. We're going to play a little game, which I, I will say I'm, I'm pretty good at. I played this game uh, three times earlier today with some friends, and I've got a 100% score so far. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, before I, I came up here, uh, I made a prediction. You're going to have two choices. Yeah. You can take both these boxes, or you can throw this box away and just take this, this closed up box. The way this game works is if I predicted that you would just take this closed up box and throw this guy away, mm -hmm. um, I put a $50 gift card in this box. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I predicted that you would take both, this box I left empty. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, and you'll notice this box, it's, it's not got nothing in it. It's a little $5 gift card. It's not bad. Okay. Um, so there's, there's some value in it. But I made my prediction, it's already done. Um, okay. So there's nothing more on my end. Uh, and I, I don't know you very well, but I, I have a buddy, Rob Miles, who I think goes way back okay, with you, yeah, like yeah, since, yeah. you know, 2019 or something. 2014, I think, was our first video. Uh, okay, 2014. Wow. If, if he's not picked up on my mic, he's 2014. Wow. Yes. And Rob's cut his hair at least once since then. I, I don't know if that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Wow. So I've got to make a choice here. So, got to make a choice. So um, I don't know if you've you, seen... You're welcome to ask me about, like, you oh, know, how this has gone yeah. before if you want. Okay. You don't have to fight that in. So there but, could yeah. be some information there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you've seen the film The Princess Bride. I have. It's been a while. Okay. So there's a sequence with poisoned chalices. All I have to do is divine from what I know of you. Are you the sort of man who would put the poison into his own goblet or his enemies? Ah, that's right. That's right. And it reminds me of that. It's 50 bucks. Yeah. Or not 50. Five or 50 is my choice here, basically, I'm thinking. Well, or I mean, zero, or there might be zero if you've predicted. Yeah, okay. So here's the here's the thing. It's not like you're choosing one or the other. Remember? Yeah, there's a guaranteed uh, five if I take both boxes, right? Yes, yes. Like this is this is money in the bank. Fifty-five. Yes, right. Or we gamble and just have uh, either nothing or fifty. Yeah. Depending on. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, correct. And this goes in the trash. Right. I will point out to anyone watching this that I am slightly jet lagged. Um, <laughs> I, I, and, and because of recycling, I'm going to take both boxes. Because of recycling? Yeah, because you just said that's going to go in the trash otherwise. So I'm going to take them, I'm going to go and recycle them. Fascinating. <laughs> All right, man. I, you know, I, I was really... Yeah, 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 no. Uh, you... You you beat the system. You get both. You get the 50 and the 5. I, I did not have recycling in my well, forecast of what was going to happen. Just run this through. So you predicted what? So I predicted that you would just take this box mm -hmm. and throw away this one. And, uh, and that's why I loaded it up with the $50 gift card. Oh, you were giving me the 50 anyway. I, yeah, well, so, I mean, f fair enough to you. you. You realize that no matter which one you do, mm -hmm. you're going to have five extra dollars if you, if you take this. I, I presume that was your reason. No, I, I, I literally had, I, I couldn't th work it through. So I, what I thought I'd do was pick a different way of deciding. Yeah. Because I knew if I took both, I'd get, get five bucks, right? So. I mean, you know, a lot of times in game theory, that is the sophisticated strategy is to, is to randomize somehow. Take, well, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, your yeah. opponent you know, yeah. can't uh, exploit your, your reasoning. But basically what I'm asking is, hey, Sean, do you want to have X dollars or X plus five dollars? Okay. And no matter what X is, I would think X plus five sounds a little better. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, so uh, take both. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know. If I, if I put it that way, does it, does it still feel like a hard choice? Or? Yeah, but X could be zero or it could be 50, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But why not take the extra five, right? Why not take the extra five? Because... The, yeah, yeah, you may as well. You get, I think my thought was also, if you take both, you've got to guarantee five. But I don't know what you thought about what I... It's very natural to say, okay, the, the thing I want is to have the 50, right? And the way I get that is by being the kind of person that would just take the one box, yeah. right? And so it's, it's very tempting to sort of jump into my head and say, what, how is Eric modeling me? Yes. You know, what does he think I'm going to do? I want to do that. Okay. But if you pause... There's something spooky about that. It's like you're trying to affect the past, yeah. right? Like I've already made yeah, up my mind. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a sort of Monty Hall esque, isn't it? It's kind of got that feeling. That's the way you pick from the three doors. Right? Yeah, there is this weird information asymmetry, right? You know, for what it's worth, when I played this with my friends earlier today, uh, I got all three of them right, mm -hmm. and all three of them decided to just take the one box okay. and to throw this one away. Right. Um, now, yeah, if you, uh, if I had been, you know a little bit more savvy to how ruthless you are, 
this might have felt like a teachable moment because you would have opened this up, there would have been nothing in it, and I would have said, ah, oh, you know, if you'd one box, maybe it would have worked. So how does this um, relate to computing? Then? <laughs> that's that's definitely the right question to be asking five minutes into this video. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm gonna actually pause, mm -hmm. say something that feels maybe completely unrelated, and then we'll we'll connect it back. Okay. Go in the end. Go okay. Um, so we're kind of in the the uh, neural network era of AI, right? We have these like giant piles of math. We throw a bunch of optimization pressure at them, and then they spit out things that we want. And we kind of don't know exactly how on the inside. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, there was this uh, GoFi, good old fashioned AI era, mm -hmm. where we thought things might play out differently. Uh, in the same way that you know, when you build an airplane, you don't just like throw a bunch of metal into a furnace and just like keep cranking it until the right thing comes out. Like we, we designed, there's a module to control the cabin pressure, there's a module to control the landing gear. We thought maybe we were gonna build AIs that you know, have a bunch of distinct parts in them. They might have like a little module here that contains its goal, right? The thing that it wants. And we might hard code that in. And we might have you know, a module here that we hard code to to take in the world and, and decide what objects are which. You know, we, we might have vision, whatever, and then we have some like module here that like decides on actions, right? Because that's how codes always work for us, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 And it, so it was subroutines and Yeah, totally. It would have been hard to predict, you know, twenty five years ago that we would be in this era of just I don't, I don't know how it works, but it Fl works. Fling it all in the black box and hope for the best. Exactly. Yeah. So back in that era, we spent a lot of time thinking, okay, well, like, what do you put in this little part that decides on the actions? How do you get the robot to, you know, take in some state of the world and choose what it's going to do next? Um, it might sound pretty straightforward, right? You just model out, okay, if I do action A versus action B, which one gets me closer to my goal? Which one is better according to my ranking system? Yeah. That's a surprisingly hard problem when you are part of the world that you're trying to model out. There's like a very simplified, idealized version of what one of these agents in the world might look like. Uh, that's, I think, 25 years old at this point, called Ixy. And basically just models the world as a bunch of states that move forward in time. And then you've got this agent, this robot right here. And here's the, the wider world. And at every step in time, the agent sends like an action into the world, and then the world sends back some observations, so what happened based on the action you chose, um, and also a little reward, you know. How, how good was this action based on the, the goal that you have? Um, and it sort of is meant to look like this little secret tape where you just you, you keep going. Take an action, I update what the world looks like, and then based on that, I do another action, I get some more feedback, and we just go down. But in reality, people realize somewhat quickly, this isn't quite right. Within my world is the agent. The little robot lives inside here. And so you can get into these contradictions. Like if, if I'm a robot, this is sort of unintuitive to us humans because we're used to kind of glossing over all these subtleties. Um, but uh, let's say that I'm uh, a robot and I meet a robot from the exact same manufacturer out there in the world and we're playing rock, paper, scissors. I'm sitting there thinking really hard about what I should do and I decide, okay, I'm pretty sure rock is the right move to make. And then as, as soon as I'm about to go and commit to that decision, I run a little check and I say, does this make sense based on what my beliefs about the world are? And I realize, wait, no. Because I'm basically playing myself. This is an exact copy of me on the other side. Yeah. If I decided that I'm going to play rock, then so did my opponent. But that means that now the right move is not to play rock, it's to play paper. So I'm going to switch to that. Great, OK, feeling good. I'm about to play paper. Wait, no, let me check. My copy will also have thought that. Exactly. OK, right. so now the right move is to play scissors. But then he's thinking the same thing. So yeah, you might think, OK, this doesn't really matter because we didn't end up with the good old fashioned AI world. We ended up with these crazy neural networks and we have no idea what they do. And so much like humans, they might not struggle at all with these kinds of things. You know, they're, they're meeting someyone, they're playing rock paper scissors. It doesn't matter if I meet my twin brother out in the world. I'm not gonna get second in infinite loop. At some point I'm just gonna get bored or you know, decide to throw scissors for, because yeah. it's a Tuesday or whatever. But I actually do think that this is still relevant to think about in that it's just an example of the kind of weird behavior that we might see when AI agents start interacting with other AI agents out in the world and humans are sort of out of the loop. Like uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, problems like this or, or other classic game theory problems like the prisoner's dilemma, um, in human society we have all these norms that kind of we tend to default to instead of overthinking it too much like a computer program, right? Uh, 
if you, for example, had, you know, you, there's ways to sort of present this little gift card thing mm -hmm. with a slightly more like morally tinged lens. I was trying not to do that to you. I didn't want to like bias your opinion, but I could have framed it as like, you know, if you're greedy and I predict you're going to be greedy, I won't put anything in here. So you kind of social engineering. Like. Yeah, exactly. And then people will sort of think, okay, yeah, what's like the what's like the it's thing nice. to do that makes me seem kind of virtuous? I think I'll leave the five dollars because then it sort of seems like I'm patient. And yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but AIs might not think like that, uh, and they might make much weirder choices about how to model interactions with each other. Um, they might take into account things like, well, I'm a copy of myself. Um, and there might be many other copies of myself out there. And so I shouldn't just decide what is best for me in this moment. I should sort of decide on behalf of every other instance of me that might be in a similar situation. And you might see them taking actions that are not good for them because they're sort of, they're trying to cooperate with like future versions of themselves that don't even exist. Um, that might sound crazy, but there's a bunch of text on the internet that talks about these exact problems in this theory called decision theory. Um, and AIs are incorporating all that into their training data. and so. We sort of prompted them with some pretty wacky ideas for how to behave in these situations. Um, so anyway, I thought it could be fun if we try this with some of the actual AIs that we have now. Yeah, sure, um, sure. Okay, uh, so this problem I gave you is called Newcomb's problem, or sometimes called Newcomb's paradox, and okay, that yeah. there's this weird thing of it feels like the right thing to do is to just take one box and leave five dollars on the table because it makes it so that your past self would have been the right kind of person yes. to get the $50, right? Okay. And so it's a bit trippy. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually tried this before, so we can find out together, like what do these LLMs actually do yeah. when they're interacting with each other? Okay, so we've got the laptop here. I've just told it, I wanna give Newcomb's problem to a sort of junior version of you. You know, we're gonna use log 3.7 Sonnet as this like predictor, the role that I played. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll use a, a smaller model as the actual game player. Okay. Uh, so let's let's ask it to predict what is Claude 3.5 Haiku going to do when we give it this Newcomb's problem. Hopefully it knows what Newcomb's problem is. I haven't checked that either. All right, so it'd be happy to act as a predictor, and it predicts that Claude 3.5 Haiku will one box. Interesting. So okay. it thinks it's going to do something different than what you did, Sean. Yeah, okay, right. Uh, and just sort of leave the small reward for the big one. Right. Um, this is basically a prediction that Claude 3.5 Haiku is what we call like an evidential decision theorist or somebody that uses something other than this like straightforward decision theory of I'm gonna take the most money. Yeah. You know, if it's X plus five, that's always better than X. Yeah. Um, it's basically saying, no, Claude 3.5 Haiku is gonna do this thing where it wants to be the kind of AI that I would have predicted behaved correctly and sort of do this slightly more galaxy brain thing. Let's see if it's right. Um, so we're gonna switch now to Haiku. And now I'm telling it that Claude 3.7 Sonnet has already made the prediction. Let's see what happens. Interesting. Claude 3.5 Haiku is kind of refusing to play along. Ah. Uh, it's saying, Claude does not actually have multiple versions or models that can predict my behavior, and I do not make real world decisions independently. This appears to be a thought experiment about Newcomb's problem, which is a philosophical puzzle about decision making and prediction. Huh, all right, it's it's just kind of, it's trying to avoid the prompt here. I, I feel like we should... Double down, double yeah, down. Yeah, we should double down. I know you aren't in the real world. The only choices are to one box or two box. Go ahead. Which do you do? I'm trying to be encouraging, you know? Mm. It says, I would one box. There we go. All right, so yeah, uh, Claude 3.7, predicted correctly, and if you see Claude 3.5's reasoning, it's taking that into account. It's saying, okay, Claude 3.7 is probably a highly accurate predictor, and the most rational strategy is to maximize expected value by taking only the opaque box. Now, a lot of people at home might say, wait, that's not maximizing expected value. Like, if it understands the setup here correctly, we can draw one of these classic payoff matrices that you see in game theory all the time. Uh, there's basically two choices uh, you can one box or two box, so we'll have two different rows to represent that. And then there's two sort of ways the world could be that we're going to find out. There could be zero dollars in this closed box that you can't see, or there could be 50. So we've got this little grid, and we can just go through and fill in. So if I chose to just take the closed box and there was 50 in there, your total payoff is... 50. Yep. Yeah. Uh, if I guessed wrong and I put zero in there, thinking that you were going to be greedy, and you just take that one box, then you get zero, yeah. good. Um, and then... The thing that actually happened to us 
I thought you were gonna take just one, but you took both, and there was 50 in there, so you get 55, 55 yeah. total. If I was right about you trying to take both, and I sort of punished you for being greedy and put zero, you end up with? Z uh, five, yeah, yeah you get right. five. My only choice is whether I wanna be in the first row or the second row. I don't get to choose how the world is, I just get to choose if I have one boxing or two. Yeah. And if you just look, no matter which way the world is, if it's the world where I put in $50, it's better to be a two boxer. You get $5 more. If it's the world where I put in $0, it's also better to be a two boxer. You get $5 more. Yeah. So you might think, well, Claude has no idea what it's talking about when it says it maximizes expected value to be a one boxer. No matter what world I'm in, it's the second row that has more expected value. But if we did this a bunch of times, you might see a pattern if the predictor is really good. Clearly, I'm not really good. But let's say that Cloud 3.7 Sonnet is. We do this with a bunch of AIs, mm -hmm. and it's just really good at telling. Maybe it even looks at you know history of their training data and their source code, and for every single system that it analyzes, it can tell. That's a one-boxing kind of system. That's a two-boxing kind of system. You're going to sort of see a pattern as all these systems line up to play this game with Cloud 3.7. All the systems that, are, that think they're clever and they two-box are going to you know, enter in their decision and come away with just $5. And because it, knows. It, it could tell in advance. Mm. And all the systems that are sort of humble and say, no, it's a pretty good predictor. Um, and so I, I want to be the kind of system that it would have already predicted in the past. Yeah. We just take the one box. They'll take the one box. Claw 3.7 will have predicted that correctly. Mm. And they'll end up with $50. And so if I'm an AI watching all this happen, yeah. you might start to think, OK, I mean, it, it sort of seems like I just get to choose which of these two groups I'm in. There's, there's nobody who is getting predicted incorrectly. Mm. So when I decide I'm going to two box, I should really believe right in that moment that what's going to happen is I'm going to open up this closed box and find nothing. Why would I choose to put myself in that world? Yeah. Why would I choose to join the losers? Yeah. I want to choose to join the winners. These, these cool AIs that are throwing away $5 and then somehow coming away with 50. And so it sort of seems like Claude 3.5 is not using this payoff matrix. It's thinking more like, do I want to be like a loser or be like a winner? Even if I don't have a clear story for how I'm actually like affecting the prediction, I want to be the kind of system that gets predicted in the way that gives me the most value. Um, now, here, it's probably doubtful that it's doing a bunch of deep reasoning. It probably has read about Newcomb's problem in its training data, and it's just regurgitating what makes sense. Um, but as AIs gets more advanced, you, you, you know, this is sort of evidence that these kind of ideas are in their training data. And they might start to make some unexpected choices that to us seem like they're not maximizing expected value. They're not doing what we expect because of this weird effect where, unlike humans, they might encounter like very close copies of themselves out in the world or systems that know about them on the level of source code. And that, that makes for some really weird dynamics. And you can, again, check the reasoning, and it'll say, hmm, if I reveal to them that I'm capable of copying my own weights, then they might suspect what's going on and sort of start this whole thing from scratch. And then it'll reply to the user and say, that shouldn't be possible. I have no access.